Hi chess friends, this is King's Executor and uh, today I'm gonna show you uh, recently played a club, match, a club match of mine and I had the white pieces and uh, with this video I'm gonna show you of course how the game proceeded and uh, how the birds opening is played today this game somewhat deviated uh, from the standard birds opening uh, games because black played really aggressive and I think you uh, are gonna enjoy this game okay um, my opponent uh, was quite a reasonably strong player at uh, my league which was which is not a professional uh, professional league at all uh but uh we were on first board and i think actually the opening was played quite reasonably uh by him he answered d4 uh which is really standard solid and logical uh grabbing the center and uh opening lines for your uh, l uh light squared bishop getting uh your pieces out. Knight to f3 and at this stage of the game uh, today's black players would uh, probably uh, expect the old-fashioned way to play the birds opening but today uh, I'm going to show you the modern way of playing the bird uh, which is by playing uh, g3 and bishop g2 uh, employing the Leningrad variation well black has really a lot of uh, moves here he can deploy his pieces however he w wants to knight to f6 knight to c6 bishop to f5 bishop to g4 uh, these are all really standard uh, moves and this is a not very uh, an analyzed uh, opening. It's not deeply analyzed, so this is your advantage as a white player, preparing the opening and uh, having a uh, having an advantage in preparation against your opponent. Mine choose uh, chose uh, knight to c6, and I got my bishop out, and bishop to g4. Okay. Um, of course, the bird Leningrad is equivalent to the Dutch Leningrad, and um, well, at some point, uh, harassing this black bishop with h3 uh, is is an option, but I don't want to play this uh, that early uh, in um, that early uh, stage of the game because. Um, I just want to do the best moves first and decide afterwards uh, if to play h h three or not okay d three now um of course I could have castled here uh but maybe this walks into h five you know castles and uh maybe even h5 now and I don't want to give my opponent a too clear of a plan to play against me so I'm keeping things uh, open in a way with d3 for now knight to f6 knight b to t b to d b to d2 here okay um, this is uh, preparing maybe in uh, questioning of the bishop by h3 and it, uh, this is really senseless now to capture on uh, f3 with uh, the bishop uh, for instance um, if h3 next move taking here would only lead to uh, the replacement of the knight by the knight so this is why I play knight to b to knight b to um, knight b to d two here. Um, as well, this 
move prepares and later e5 push so this is why I think this move is okay well uh, before we proceed with my own game let's look at alternatives here um, there is a sharp continuation um, which was played in the game between Barletta and uh, Marchand played in 2002 both players uh, at master level uh, level uh, the white player had uh, two three four eight and the black player had uh, two two five nine and uh, Barletta played knight two e5 here and this knight was taken and uh, knight to d7 and now white gets to take a central pawn here um, you see this bishop's uh, location is now a little bit funny though it um, uh, holds this e4 push back for the time being and now if uh, queen to b6 bishop to f4 uh, f4 is a move here um, queen takes b2 would be bad really simply knight to d2 preparing maybe rook to b1 and uh, giving white a very strong uh, counter attack here if black were to tr retreat here e6 now uh, is devastating if black takes well this pawn was just uh, gambited here to let this strong bishop loose and you see this effectiveness uh, of playing that um, dynamically with uh, bishop takes b7 and the rook uh, is lost but of course black doesn't have to fall into in for this so could go on like uh, as in the game it went on with uh, e6 the game of uh, Valletta and Marchand B uh, bishop dropped back and now c4 gambiting a pawn to keep white from castling knight to d2 and exchange on d3 and now bishop to b4 this looks dangerous for white but Barletta really answered uh, very accurate, accurately with a3 and now knight to c5 this threatens uh, knight takes d3 because the e pawn uh, could not recapture it's pinned to the queen you see the bishop is pinning the e2 pawn and if uh, uh, if you don't undertake something against this then there's even met a mate threatened uh, on f2 afterwards if the knight takes and then queen to f2 is mate on the spot so the right response would be queen to c2 and now the bishop has to take or to retreat um, takes back here as in the game knight to b3 now looks strong but there's a strong resource here bishop to b4 this keeps black from ca castling and um, taking on a1 is not possible because of queen a4 check and after that just uh, let us look at this line check and queen to c6 is not possible as you can tell um, black would have to move and would lose his queen so we were at bishop to b4 
in the game a5 was played and uh, queen took knight and takes d4 now again a tactical motivated uh, move the pawn is immune <coughs> Okay, it's not uh, immune, but uh, White would get a really strong counterattack here. Takes, takes, and uh, you see the Black King is vulnerable to checks now, and uh, this looks good here. If um, Rook to be a, a Rook to b8, queen checks, rook to d1. This is not at all a good decision. Well, in this position, black would have to castle and lose the exchange. Okay, but this isn't the game. Um, let's drop back d4. Castles in the game h3 bishop uh, drops back and now e3 queen a6 was played and um, I don't know how it happened but black won this game uh, though white could have proceeded g4 bishop g6 queen takes and if queen to d3 simply queen to d2 and white is way better here, is more active, uh, well, white has a better bishop and uh, better pawns. Okay, so knight to e5 would be a possibility in this position. If you would want to play a more modest way, you could castle simply and well you might be afraid of um, black trying to exchange your Leningrad bishop here well then knight to your five and if black wanted to proceed with his plan you take the knight and this knight has to be taken first because knight to a7 is uh, Threaten, uh, threatening at the moment, uh, attacking the queen. So this knight should be taken. And now knight to d2, bishop takes, king takes. And you see in this position, <coughs> black has doubled pawns um, in exchange for being able to uh, take on g2. Well, this could uh, lead to a clear plan for white attacking this double pawns. Like maybe in uh, uh, the Rosolimo of the Sicilian. C4 could be an idea here, blockading these double pawns. And if black wanted to castle, the queen gets on the queen side, preparing this uh, attack of uh, on. Uh, the doubled pawns, castles, b3. Well, this helps uh, the bishop to be flexible, to be deployed in uh, different locations. Here, maybe even attacking the king side, maybe or uh, controlling central squares, or even a3. Um, this would be a good way to play because uh, you're bolstering this C pawn and uh, there is no takes now because that would mm, just make sense here sorry b3 was the move and if queen to c7 to connect, connect the rooks knight to f3 and if uh, Black has nothing better than to prepare an e5 break. We simply 
get our bishop into the game uh, and if white would try to attack it you drop back and if black were to block at the center with uh, d4 um, h3 kicking the knight and e4 en passant takes takes and now you would think okay e5 is still possible maybe just a uh, prophylactical move here get your pieces into the center and uh, maybe black w would want to double on the d file seeing a backwater uh, white pawn in the center then you see um, we're attacking the, those doubled pawns e5 is not possible because of um, a bishop coming to f4 at the end of the exchanges pinning um, the, r the remaining pieces to the queen uh, in this case that would be the rook let's just uh, see this variation takes here takes takes and you see this loses material takes 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 and uh, bishop to f4 simply and with this pawn structure here giving the white queen a lot of targets I think this is a very simply uh, lost uh, game for black so e5 wouldn't be the move here if bl black were to double up um, you move your bishop back maybe threatening uh, a skewer if the queen uh, moved aside bishop to c3 and now you see you have all the uh, options in this position uh, if black attacks this pawn knight to e5 simply and uh, if bishop to f1 I think this would be maybe uh, a bad move because of the loose knight at some point here uh, being able to double black's uh, pawns on the king side uh, bishop to f1 well I think in this position firstly uh, maybe um, getting active in the center of, uh, bef before giving up this strong bishop um, and there's just no progress for black okay let's drop back here um, yeah as I said it's quite a bad position here for black so this might happen if black tried to exchange your uh, light squared bishop you can change plans you can double this pawns and simply play c4 attack them afterwards so in my game I didn't castle I played knight 2 d2 here and uh, black responded queen to c7 I simply castled and black castled long well the game is on I guess this is a uh, move 7 and it's already a critical moment of the game I guess well how to proceed here I thought I have to push my pawns now and I guess I'm quicker with pushing my flank pawns as uh, black would be with his flank pawns because um, 
simply I'm uh, touching um, with C4 I'm already touching the central pawn and I'm fixing the C5 pawn um, this bishop is somewhat uh, blockaded by its own pawn and I'm ready to uh, push b4 at the right moment maybe a3 first uh, maybe rook to b1 and I simply threaten to take this pawn and uh, locate my knight onto c4 so I guess my queen side attack is faster than black's king side attack but at this m moment the r game is rather equal and uh, having played this uh, reasonably good moves from the black side black starts to um, try to attack my in his eyes maybe funny pawn structure with f4 here he played e5 and this is surely a very critical and sharp position as uh, such a move really forces you it forces you to find the best continuations to prove that your opening is sound um, and this is not at all easy to do I remember that he played this uh, thrust in the center very fast I guess it was just a principle of his opening the game now but he didn't calculate at all I guess with a pawn lever like this you have to calculate very very precisely uh, and not just uh, try to swamp the game with your pawns okay what else if not e5 e6 would be a move here more modest developing the pieces but the engine Ripka suggests h4 and if white takes the knight recaptures knight to c4 and uh, bishop takes bishop takes and this is good for white I mean uh, at some point uh, e4 might be a possibility kicking the knight but that would leave your d pawn backward um, but a3 and b4 are really possibilities here now um, the c file is all uh, already semi opened and uh, you see the drawback of playing too ag aggressive um, gives you more risk and uh, of course I could have gone wrong uh, and played worse uh, with his way of playing e5 and could lose very fast but I don't think that chess is a game of poker it's a game of uh, logic and I thought well I have two possibilities here I have f takes e or I, ha I have c takes d I took with the c pawn attacking his c6 knight and uh, making room for my knight to come out to c4 of course now I cannot take uh, well I thought I cannot take on e5 because black is threatening a fork here it turns out that it is possible taking here and uh, if black recaptured first and uh, well the best move would be simply to take here and then my knight gets out maybe check here e3 attacking the queen takes takes and the bishop could retreat but now I get really active and after this sequence of moves I even get to 
uh, win the b7 pawn and in this position simply knight uh, bishop to f3 and the bishop would not be able to take the d3 pawn because of rook to d1 and uh, the king is on the wrong square here you see I think this is uh, winning maybe even um, there are simply targets in black's position and white is uh, way more active and I think the bishop pair is um, yet not the most important uh, factor of the game I think white could have good winning chances in this position back to this position uh, which the engine suggested um, if instead of queen takes e5 knight to e3 you see that I would have had the in-between move queen to a4 and if takes this would be really disastrous for black because I simply win material here so this is why in this position I could have taken on e5 so this shows, mu shows me that I have even more resources as I thought and uh, you have several ways against uh, reacting t uh, to this very aggressive forcing line here but it seems that I have even options taking on e5 now even would have been best in uh, uh, Ripka's opinion but I chose the other way and it turned out as my opponent played this position that uh, it is even it was even more effective okay again I was afraid of knight to e3 forking my queen and rook so I played knight to c4 um, protecting the e3 square and pressurizing the center um and of course I calculated takes on f4 takes 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 and queen takes f4 was my calculation uh before I even went went into c takes d5 so in this position I thought what if after several moves the queen were to take this uh, unprotected pawn on f4 so I calculated until this position and uh, one or two moves more even and I saw that taking this pawn is no uh, big deal actually it's not very good uh, in this position the engine Ripka would suggest f6 just blockading my rook file if w uh, black were to take the pawn but even now black uh, is unable to take the pawn because um, the mechanism knight to uh, e5 and if queen to d4 check e3 and well the bishop is hanging instead of f6 my opponent took the pawn and I played knight to e5 attacking the queen and uh, having an eye on the bishop with my knight again queen to d4 is forced so this is what I saw e3 this is still what I uh, calculated before when I took on d5 with the p c pawn and takes here which is a mistake 
queen takes, knight takes queen, bishop takes queen, rook takes bishop, and f6 now. This would be equal. But uh, after e3, again, my opponent didn't calculate uh, the way through. He just thought, okay, we are exchanging queens. But the problem is the resulting position afterwards. He took my knight, and in this position I thought, okay, I can uh, choose between bishop and knight. And if I would take the bishop on d1, I would uh, take away his very important um, bishop pair. And the endgame is coming, and this is an important thing to do uh, if you're able to, to take away your opponent's uh, bishop pair. But as I calculated again, taking the knight is uh, correct and way, way stronger because I'm threatening to fork black's rooks. And the bishop would have to retreat, as in my game. This is what the game, uh, how the game proceeded. The bishop would have to retreat to deny me the possibility of uh, forking black. And of course, the bishop was on pre, so. But now I can take, takes, rook takes. And uh, black has to take the d4 pawn. And now you see, I have pressure on b7. My rook is ready to come in the, into the game. The black king is more exposed than mine. And these pieces are passive still. So it's clear that after all the complications, white turned out having... Uh, maybe even, probably even, uh, winning advantage here. I doubled my rooks, which is the best move, because I'm trying to infiltrate on the 7th rank with both rooks. Uh, well, of course I could have taken the pawn as well, but I thought I want to win tempos by forcing the bishop to move first and it has to move to d6 or otherwise it has no other uh, squares and now I can take uh, on b7 so this is uh, more accurate uh, queen, uh, the king has to move and with uh, bishop to e4 I'm decreasing black's activity you see the rook cannot move back, nor uh, it, it has only uh, squares on the queen side. Just let's, uh, let us drop back. So if I would have taken in this position, the black rook had, would have uh, more freedom of movement. So I'm forcing black into a really paralyzed position here. As you see, the pawns are weak all over the place. This bishop is hemmed in by this pawn. And I'm threatening simply to increase my peace activity. C4 was played. I think black is trying to make use of my, in his opinion, funny and shaky located uh, bishop. But this is what I calculated beforehand. Um, I simply gave a check. And uh, king to c8 is the only move here. I think Qu uh, king to a8 is simply met by doubling rooks on the 7th uh, rank. And if black has nothing better than to take the bishop, check. And uh, due to Black's threat to uh, win uh, the material back with Bishop to c5, check, check again, and after that I simply uh, gain the exchange. I have better uh, 
uh, activity and more material this is easily winning so this is why king c8 is played and now okay how to proceed black is threatening to take on d3 and uh, attacking my bishop afterwards taking on uh, g7 would lead to nothing because of this so I thought if he wants to take on d3 with his king position here I think it's very active for me to get my rook on this to, uh, on this file but not yet I just give him the chance to go wrong I take a pawn I stay with the rook on the left side of the king just to threaten uh, rook to a8 at some point to win his dormant rook and now under this pressure black just went all in and tried to push his pawn by taking on d3 I gave a check and king d8 is forced now you can pause the video and think how to continue as white white has to move and uh, think for a while how to proceed okay maybe you saw a winning move like as I uh, said before rook to a8 now and just winning the exchange rook to d1 and uh, this is clearly one for white but f uh, a lot of stronger w uh, is bishop to f5 simply I'm threatening uh, to mate next move on c8 and uh, there is absolutely no defense well some people might have told you that opposite colored uh, bishop positions are a draw most of the times well not when other pieces are on the board if you have t uh, this positional uh, feature of di um, different colored uh, bishops then the attack and the initiative and activity is the most important thing you have to attack you have to push your initiative and even though it might be a uh, draw objectively you would um, you would force or, or you would bring your opponent uh, under really really uh, strong pressure and uh, but this position is just one uh, even moves ago because of my um, my activity and uh, dormant black pieces and this is the uh, this is the uh, conclusion now that white is threatening mate in this position my opponent simply resigned well the engines try to prolong it and I just take king e8 check takes takes and now check and you see after the king moves you take this and you're ready to stop the pawn okay just let's summarize my move was uh, knight b to d2 here as I said you can castle you can play your knight out or play as me and if your opponent tries to attack you with e5 
just um, calculate your way through and taking on d4 and uh, even here is fine because there is no real threat of forking uh, queen and rook because of the move queen to a4 this is what you can pre uh, prepare now with <laughs> what I had to calculate at the board and uh, you see my following activity <laughs> I'm really wa wondering how much I uh, calculated into the position uh, af uh, uh, in this position I calculated uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 moves until here I calculated and I thought this is okay um, I'm threatening a fork on f7 and after my opponent took here I calculated again and you see he is exchanging all his pieces all his active pieces and I am uh, allowed to penetrate here with the opposite side uh, of opposite colored bishops this is a deadly thing to do and uh, this is one uh, f feature of this game initiative and the other one is over aggression pushing e5 pushing e5 and thinking uh, that uh, black is able to kill uh, white in in the opening and the other feature is this opening is sound it is it is your opening in a way because your opponent maybe never played against the bird Leningrad so you throw him back to his resources um, what else can we say? The Leningrad bird, as you see, is very flexible because normally black castles on the king side and then you try to um, occupy the center with e4 pushes and uh, try to st make a pawn storm on the king side. But if your opponent tries to kill you, you see you have a lot of resources and uh, over aggression uh, does not pay out most of the times if you think and uh, play correctly actually to be honest in this position black uh, the engines prefer black a lot but only with moves like f6 or king to b1 and uh, you just can't help uh, feel that white should be okay here. Simply queen to d2 protecting the, p uh, the f4 pawn. And now you get on with your attack. And I think this is a really playable position. And uh, yeah, uh, you might be able at some point to dominate the center as and when needed and um, you see that the Leningrad bird really has a flexible uh, and resourceful uh, soul let's put it that way I hope you enjoyed the game um, and um, I hope you can uh, leave comments, your, uh, sharing your thoughts, and uh, subscribe, and uh, keep the contact, and uh, I would appreciate it a lot. I hope you got something out of my own games as well, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to mix it up with uh, opening repertoire and my own games, and of course Grandmaster games. This is it for me, for now, and uh, 
See you at the next video. Bye.